Most of them are like typically like some sort of physical. There might be like kind of a, a consistent bob. Um, some of them will like have like a facial grimace, but most people I know with Tourette's don't actually have verbal tics. Verbal tics are decently rare, yet it, it's really weird with this explosion of young women having tics because they're all verbal. But if you think about what type of Tourette's is gonna be more sensational and trend more on TikTok, it's going to be verbal tickers. Oh, this is so rough because it's like, now they've also made like a, fuck, like a, they have an incentive to maintain it. Okay, let me read this to you guys. So, across the world, girls suffering from mysterious. So, young women around Australia are being struck down by mystery neurological illness, with experts fearing social media addiction and pandemic stress is triggering the problem. The Tourette syndrome like disorder is seeing teenagers suffering from uncontrollable tics, which include outbursts, twitching, pops, noises, swearing, kicking, and hitting. The doctors are also witnessing this phenomenon across the globe, where previously young, healthy women have reported suddenly coming down with violent physical and verbal impulses. But what's causing the rapid increase in cases has parents and medical authorities baffled. One possible explanation is that the anxiety and stress stemming from the extended periods of isolation coupled with obsessions for apps like TikTok may have been the catalyst. This bright, spunky, fiercely independent young girl is trapped in her own body, just in her own head. It's really hard to watch. It appears to have given them a kind of Tourette syndrome. They're ticking uncontrollably. Doctors don't understand why, but there's no doubt it's a very real mental health condition. And even more bizarrely, it seems popular TikTok videos are playing a role in it. For the young girls who are suffering, there's no filter, which is a way of warning you the language in this story is at times offensive. It hasn't been easy to be a teenager these past couple of years. But for Metallica Torzillo, life has been especially hard. In 2020, right in the most difficult months of COVID, the 14-year-old began to experience extreme tics. Hi, how are you? You have an appointment today? I'll get you to come over this way for me. Involuntary movements and noises that would soon hijack her every waking moment. It was um, offensive verbal words and gestures. And it just got more and more explosive. And all the time, it was like from the moment she got out of bed, you knew when she was awake because the whole house was loud from the moment she got up mm -hmm. to the moment she finally had her, her tics calmed down. Oh. There are good days and bad ones. But for Mum Melissa, witnessing the profound change in her happy, bubbly daughter has been heartbreaking. This bright, spunky you know, v fiercely independent young girl, just trapped within her own head, within her own body. It's really hard to watch her. Yeah, so this is this is what we're talking about when we're talking about like social contagion, right? Is there seems to, so in general, young women's brains typically seem to have a greater level of plasticity and fluidity in like what they can actually express. For example, it seems to be the case that, for example, sexual orientation is a little bit more hardwired in young men than in young women, um, as well as even things like toy preferences and stuff. It seems to be a little bit more hardwired into young bo like infant boys and infant girls. In general, we see this really consistent pattern in young women where essentially they seem to be more environmentally influenceable um, than young men. Uh, the reason for that isn't super clear. There's just this often kind of trend in like, especially like gender differentiation behaviors and patterns and stuff where you'll see women experiencing kind of a greater fluidity of expression. So like a really simple example is like toy preference tests. Um, so if, if you look at infants, um, and you give them basically a wheeled toy or a plush, um, Boys almost always want the wheeled toy. They very, very rarely want the plush um, at very young ages. Whereas it seems like with girls, they tend to pick the plush. However, if you, and that's basically if you give them both and they only get to pick one. However, if you put them in an open play setting, so for example, the plushes and the wheeled toys are all there. And then you time how long they play with each type of toy. You'll again see that the young boys almost exclusively want to play with the wheeled toys. They barely and very minimally interact with the plush. 
plush, whereas the young girls will actually play pretty equally with both the toy, the wheeled toy and the plush, which is a really interesting thing when you're starting to look at like gender roles and stuff like that. It may be the case, for example, that like women may actually be a lot more like flexible. There's one teen with this fucking car. So loud. Um, than young boys. And the reason for that isn't super clear. And the argument that it's just like, why would it be the case that women are socialized to be more fluid and men are not? You can maybe make that argument, but we see really similar um, kind of splits of preferences, for example, in like um, Rhesus monkeys and stuff. You were anticipating that one. I was. Yeah. <laughs> you saw it coming. <laughs> well, yeah. What made you want to do that to mom just then? Her stupid voice. Okay. No. You don't mean that, though, do you? No. <laughs> yeah. Diagnosed with both Tourette's and a functional neurological disorder, Metallica sometimes has no control over what she does and says. So how do your tics come out? Is it yelling? Is it hitting? Is it kicking? How do your tics come out? Yelling, screaming, kicking, hitting, pinching, biting, <laughs> spitting. You name it. Yep. Has it been a tough past couple of years for you? A little bit. Yes. A lot? Yeah. I would say yes. What's been tough? Lockdowns and not seeing my friends as much. Mm -hmm. Do you feel trapped by your tics? Not really, just a bit held back. Well, Time to die. It was in the midst of the stresses of lockdown that Metallica's 17-year-old sister, Charlie, also developed her own less severe tics. Do you set each other off when you're together? Does it get worse? Um, if it's bad for her, it's likely to set me off. Okay. And I'll most of the egg. time, I'll walk away. So it's, like, not going to set me off and then mm -hmm. make it worse for her. And what sets you off, do you think, Metallica? Everything. Life. <laughs> yeah. Which means life at home Everybody. can sometimes be a recipe for chaos. No, we haven't no, had no, oh. Oh. Metallica, why did you do God that? God damn it. Is it hard to sometimes tell when Metallica is being herself or when the ticks have sort of taken over? Sometimes it's really hard. There's a massive cork in front of me. There's. <laughs> I missed that. What was that? <laughs> She said, there's a massive cock in front of me. Sorry. <laughs> Obviously, it was funny. <laughs> she said, there's a massive cock in front of me. All right. <laughs> Sorry. You, you're talking about the microphone, right? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> forgot where we were. No, well, this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, it's, it, is, is it quite unpredictable living with yeah. someone like Metallica? It's Thanks, very Mark. unpredictable and some things come so left of field and you can't help but laugh. But is... um, at least we get some fun moments in there. Yeah. Go beyond. Go beyond. Metallica is at the extreme end of a global mental health crisis that emerged during the pandemic. <laughs> a mysterious explosion of severe physical and vocal tics affecting mainly teenage girls. Incredibly, in some cases, appearing overnight, completely out of nowhere. And sharing remarkable similarities that have confounded the medical world. Yeah, there's so it's really interesting. Typically in Tourette's, like v v vocalization of tics is actually really weird. Like verbal tics where you're screaming like fuck off and stuff is decently rare. Like sweet Anita is definitely like more rare in ticking. Most ticking, like I've worked with a number of clients and like had different like campers and stuff in my history with Tourette's. Um, most of them are like typically like some sort of physical, there might be like kind of a, a consistent bob. Um, some of them will like, have like a facial grimace, but most people I know with Tourette's don't actually have verbal tics. Verbal tics are decently rare, yet it, it's really weird with this explosion of young women having tics because they're all verbal. But if you think about what type of Tourette's is going to be more sensational and trend more on TikTok, 
it's going to be verbal tickers, right? The re- like somebody who has a physical tick isn't going to be like super interesting and novel and funny to watch on TikTok, right? If Sweet Anita just like popped all the time, it wouldn't be nearly as funny as when she's like, dick, dick, suck a dick, suck a dick, right? And like, and like ticking in that way. Um, and so this is where it's really strange is there's like a pretty consistent type of ticking that all of these young women are doing with like giving the finger and saying words and stuff that we don't typically see in the normal kind of distribution of ticks presentation and the population. Yeah. Ethan has ticks too. Yeah. You'll notice like Ethan will kind of do like the blinking, like the really heavy blinking. And then I think he touches at his nose a fair bit. That's incredibly fascinating. Even when we're seeing here, the variety of ticks so far it, The variety of ticks is far, far higher than mine. Yeah. So that's another thing is a lot of, so the one girl we were watching at the beginning was really extreme, like even sweet Anita, before I saw this trend, sweet Anita was one of the more extreme tickers that I had actually like seen, um, where she had like a number of popping noises. And then I think she has like a couple of head things that she does, right? She like rolls her head a little bit, but nothing too intense. Most of her ticks are verbal. And typically for like people with Tourette's, they're going to have dominantly one type of tick, whether it's like verbal or physical or something like that. Um, whereas, and it's going to be decently constrained in like what it is like, it's going to be pretty consistent. It's going to be shouting out words, um, popping, um, maybe a certain hand movement. But when you watch these tickers, it's the, it's all sorts of things, right? They're slapping, they're kicking, they're flailing, they're cracking eggs on people's heads, which leads to the question of like, is it a tick? Is it, this is the tricky thing. If it appears overnight, that's not what Tourette's is like. Like Tourette's doesn't just appear in somebody's life when they're 13. That's never how Tourette's is presented. And I'll go into the research on like etiology and typical presentation of Tourette's so we can kind of see the difference. Um, but yeah, it's really strange. Is there a crossover between Tourette's and OCD? There is a a bit of a crossover between um, Tourette's, OCD. uh, It's all kind of, I'm trying to think, it's basal ganglia dominant. Um, Certain impulse control disorders. Oh, I haven't studied up on Tourette's in a long time. We'll find out. We'll add that to the list of things we're going to research. Can people fake it subconsciously? Well, that's part of the question is, is social contagion faking it? Is it subconsciously faking it? Is it actively faking it? Like it's, it's really hard to know, especially it's like, if it gets them attention, even if it's negative attention and people kind of like laugh and think it's funny, it might reinforce it. But then also you'd be like, well, are they really faking it to the extent that it's like causing major destruction in their life? Probably not. But at 14, maybe like at 14, it might be funny and cool enough. Um, right. Like when the egg got cracked on the head, like it was like, uh, it doesn't really look like most, like most ticks don't typically cause you to be like, Whoa and just like punch people in the face and do like fairly complex behaviors. Ticks is oftentimes going to be like a little bit limited in what it actually causes, like a snap, a pop, a a physical movement, but to like grab an egg, move up and aim it for the top of the head and then crack it on the top of the head is a very complex behavior. I'm not saying it can't be, but it's very interesting. Ooh. All right. Thanks. Basically let's read these. Severity of symptoms varies widely among people with Tourette's in many cases may be underdetected. The most small cases are almost always unnoticeable and many people with Tourette's syndrome might not realize that they even have ticks. Yes. Cause there's other symptoms with Tourette's. So I'm the thing is, do these girls have Tourette's or do they have ticks? Do they have some sort of like ticks syndrome? Um, because ticks are commonly expressed in private, Tourette's syndrome may go unrecognized and casual observers might not notice ticks. Most studies of TS involve males who have a higher prevalence of TS than females, which is also what's weird about this. This social media phenomenon is only impacting girls. Um, gender-based differences are not well studied in 2021 review session suggested that the characteristics and progression for females, particularly in adulthood may differ and better studies are needed. True. What does subconsciously faking it means? Isn't that the same as the real case? What's the difference? The difference is a lot of times. So Tourette's is a broadly understood to be a pretty biological disorder. There's like pr- some pretty significant differences in like the basal ganglia, my understanding. And I think the tegmentum as well, there's probably more, but my understanding is there's kind of this issue, particularly in the basal ganglia and, um, Oh, what's the cortex? That's like right on, sitting on top of it. Cingulate cortex. Um, that's basically causing like your brain is your like a non-conscious brain is constantly sending signals up And so it's like, it would be a subconscious fake of basically, so 
the basal ganglia is like a gate, right? And your brain is actually sending random shit to your conscious brain all the time. It's just that basal ganglia typically catches all of it. So it might be like, punch that child and it's going to hit the gate. And then your brain subconsciously is like, no, we're not going to do that. And it never even goes to your conscious mind. Um, there's kind of like an idea that this is happening all the time. And in Tourette's, basically what happens is, is like the gate gets kicked open. And so a lot of things get bypassed constantly, and then they go right into the motor section. And so they trigger this motor reaction. Um, and you'll see differences in actual the basal ganglia functioning. Um, there's quite distinct brain differences. What I'm going to be interested to know is, do these girls present the same brain differences as most Tourette's individuals? And if they do, does it, does it suddenly develop or does it also like, does the brain change over time to make that basal ganglia gate like more wide open? The issue is, this is, this is the issue is I don't want to like dismiss cause I don't want Tourette's people listening to this to be like, no, this can be a behavior of Tourette's, right? Like Tourette's is really complex. Um, the thing that's strange about this is the like overnight presentation of Tourette's. I've also worked with individuals. They were, had a lot of like, uh, other issues going on, but there was pretty strong belief based on like, I was just like a support worker at this time. I was pretty young, but most of her psychiatrists and stuff and psychologists and like, um, occupational therapists were pretty sure that she maybe had some tics that were real, but almost exclusively they were fake because of just like her behavior afterwards. Like she would scream something and then she'd kind of like look around and smile. Um, and if you just ignored her ticking, the ticks actually disappeared. Whereas in Tourette's ignoring the ticks, isn't going to make them disappear. They might suppress a little bit because most Tourette's people, part of what triggers the Tourette's is like anxiety and distress. Um, but you wouldn't see a full elimination. How do you feel when you look back at some of the videos that captured you during the height of your ticking? It, it feels really strange looking back at it because um, I was so different. Like, oh gosh, like I can't <laughs> believe that that was me, like gosh. It's remarkable just how far Michaela Colby has come. These days, the bright and cheerful 16-year-old is pretty much tick-free. But two years ago, she was in the constant, unrelenting grip of extreme tick attacks. Um, f pissed. Ah! Stop making out with my dog. <laughs> Michaela's ticks appeared suddenly and without warning. <laughs> Much to the shock of Mum Nicole and the rest of her family. I was serving up dinner wasn't in the room but I I'd be so weird. I'd be so curious if the ticks maintain and present longer in families that laugh and give some sort of like positive funny react like some sort of reinforcing like a laughter or giggling or something like that um if it persists longer in those families I'd be super curious I don't know I, I'm I don't know if there's any research we're gonna look mine started very small with slow progression I didn't even realize what was going on was ticks for like a decade. Yeah. That's typically how I understand most people have talked with Tourette's. It's like a slow progression. The ticks were usually always there and they got increasingly bad over time and particularly got really bad during high stress periods. Bang noise, kind of something's going on, bit of a yell. So I went in there and she's laying on the floor and I thought she was having a massive anxiety attack. Next minute the arm flies or the leg starts to do something. And she's like, I didn't mean to do that. So it was very scary. Yeah. It was, it was horrible. Mexican, can you hold her hand? This home video captures that first terrifying evening as Mickey and her family struggled to comprehend the involuntary movements that had started to take over her body. It was kind of like I'd kind of lost that sense. Right. So like the fact that she's crying now, you're like, okay, hey, but this, why would she be faking it if she's like crying and distressed and grimacing and like getting afraid every time it happens? And her family's clearly now really concerned, right? Like, it's hard. And this is the issue with social contagion is it's like, it might not be real Tourette's, but the symptoms might still be real because the brain's plastic enough to create them. And so what do you call it? And then more importantly, how do you treat it? But like just dismissing those being like, they're just faking it is probably very stupid. Of like control and like just in that kind of moment. And it was just a really strange situation mm. yeah <laughs> Michaela was rushed to hospital where doctors were baffled you suck my hair and balls 
it would emerge she was suffering from a new kind of tick disorder that would soon be seen more and more. My dick fell off. I'd never heard of this ever before um, and everyone that I'd seen and spoken to was in shock, like doctors and like at the hospital, it was just this unknown thing that was happening and they were all kind of scared, which made me like a bit scared as well. How long did it last? It didn't stop. No. <laughs> it just kept going. Yeah. It, it just was... got worse. <laughs> For nine gruelling months, Michaela was trapped by her own uncontrollable impulses. Stop wanking! <laughs> An extraordinary array of tics that could reveal themselves in the most surprising of ways. I mean, she wasn't just verbally ticking. She was doing handstands and rolling around on the ground and, you know, the school would ring and going, oh, we got a tick this week, which is doing the splits. Just kicking things and throwing things everywhere and... That's you know, so strange. Yeah. yeah, I tried to bite my finger off at one point as well. So it was quite distressing mm. for everyone around me at that point in time as well. And I was constantly on edge. But yeah, just lots of really dramatic physical things. <laughs> Michaela, as it turned out, was far from alone. Uh, as medical experts struggle to explain a mysterious explosion of identical cases worldwide. It's only the first couple of patients I thought, oh, what is this? But then when you saw a couple more patients, and I started speaking to a few people around the world who were also seeing something similar, then the penny dropped and we thought, oh, we're seeing something different. Mm. So there was suddenly a wave of teenage girls developing ticks out of nowhere. Absolutely. It was... All over the world, you know, all of the continents were seeing something similar. Was it happening in contents with less social media access? That's probably going to be in large part how they determine that it's social media. Professor Russell Dale is a paediatric neurologist at Westmead Children's Hospital. Right, say An that expert now. in the workings of the young brain. Russell He's Dale. He's been diagnosing children with Tourette's for the past 23 years. It was early in 2020 when this new wave of patients began. And the first patient you saw was Michaela two years ago. That's where this all started. Yeah, she was the first patient I, I saw at the time. I didn't know, is this, is this Tourette? And it became clear, no, it wasn't. Usually Tourette's syndrome comes on gradually at an early age, affecting... So this girl is actually the TikTok famous one. So she's been known to have Tourette's, but I believe she's had Tourette's for quite a long time. She's the one I'm thinking of. Like the a bunch of the tics that I've been seeing remind me of this girl specifically, who has some of the most extreme tics that I've ever seen. She's super cute. She's very, very famous on TikTok. But I believe her Tourette's has been like properly diagnosed and saw... I could be wrong, but I I'm pretty sure in her case, the etiology was very similar to what we would typically expect in Tourette's, which is like a small presentation that gets worse and worse over time. Four times as many boys as girls. But these new patients with sudden onset ticks were teenagers and predominantly girls by a factor of 20. Oh, no, that became clear. No, it wasn't. Usually Tourette's syndrome comes on gradually at an early age, affecting four times as many boys as girls. But these new patients with sudden onset ticks were teenagers and predominantly girls, by a factor of 20 to 1. Some of the ticks were similar, uh, but some of them were definitely different, um, such as quite violent movements of um, the arms, sometimes hitting themselves in the chest, um, and also the, the vocalisations, so the repetitive noises were different, rather than just simple noises, there were much more complicated words and phrases. Yeah. So see what he's, that's, I thought I remembered that paste. I wasn't giving you guys misinformation. It's very common in Tourette's to see much more simple noises, right? So uh, a really common thing, for example, might be like, fuck off, fuck off, right? So it'll be simple. It'll be repetitive. Um, it's very, it's like, this is where Swedenita is quite rare in that hers are quite extreme, but she'll get little phrases and then they'll repeat constantly and constantly and constantly. And then they've kind of emerged as part of her symptomology. Um, whereas if these people you're seeing like really complex things like why don't you stop wanking over there you stupid little piece of shit and stuff like that um which is like very complex like things like handstands and the splits i have never heard of in typical Tourette syndrome it's very interesting uh, which were quite bizarre and i hadn't really heard uh ticks like that before so you had quite the confounding medical mystery on your hands hey babe absolutely it's very unusual and that's why it was so noticeable as you'll see it's a mystery that's turned up some surprising answers Hello. 
is social media behind an epidemic of teenage ticks? I think it lit the flame, perhaps. <laughs> Why do I need to do it? Just clap, clap the thing at the bottom. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh my God, give it back before she breaks it. <laughs> Put herself in your eyes. I'm going to start working on being less wild. Hey, thanks for becoming a member. I don't, I don't know what dance to do. Nicole Lynn is a typical fun-loving 15-year-old from Hertfordshire, <gasps> England. It was in March 2020, just days before her 13th birthday, that her tics suddenly appeared. She just couldn't stop herself. It was just bizarre. And yeah, it was just, it was really scary as to what was actually happening. Nicole, what was going through your mind when you started ticking? Um, I was really confused. Um, I got a bit... Oh, I keep stuttering because it keeps making me stop. Um, sorry. But I think I was kind of confused about the whole thing. Do you worry when it's happening? Um, I think I'm more panic about how long it's going to last. Because um, sometimes it lasts for a few minutes, sometimes it lasts for hours on end. What began as a series of neck and facial twitches soon escalated to an extraordinary array of physical and vocal tics <laughs> and plenty of colourful language. F off. Meaning Mum Jody had to develop the thickest of skins. Show me again and we'll chop your f***ing bollocks off. Brilliant. So they're the ones that are going to cause you trouble when you're out and about. Oh yeah, of course. One of the worst tics that she picked up, it was probably about three weeks in, and she kept ticking to me in a vocal tic, oh, I'm Madeline McCann. <laughs> that tick's never gone. <laughs> Even now, two and a half years later, randomly she'll come still, out with, I've then. been kidnapped, I'm Madeline McCann. Like, we could be sat at traffic lights and, I can scream and she'll be window. smashing on the window next to somebody who's parked next to us at a traffic light going, help, my mum, I've been pig kidnapped. And I'm like, pig pig I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, she hasn't. <laughs> well, shit, pussy head, mother damn, bitch. <laughs> For all of the jaw-dropping and funny moments Nicole's ticks can bring, <laughs> sometimes they can be utterly debilitating. Severe tick attacks that can last for hours on end. And those tick attacks are horrific. They're really bad. She's like clawing her eyes out or smashing herself in the face or smashing her head on the wall. Which is interesting, right? Because when you see her on social media, it's like, hee hee, taha, tutu, tu, uh oh, oh, very, very bad. But it's like, if you're, if this is spreading on social media and then you're putting your ticks on social media, but you're also only putting the cute ticks, is that potentially contributing to the issue? Floor the floor, and I'm physically having to restrain my child from injuring herself, which she can't help. I mean, Nicole's been hospitalised probably four or five times now um, because of the tick attacks. So after now more than two years with these ticks, have you been able to sort of manage them? Um, hey, thanks for the raid, Tibby. Kind of. I think I know my limit. I think I know when I'm getting too much and I kind of need to walk out and kind of sort my like myself up by my like alone. I'm still trying to figure out what works and what doesn't, so we're still figuring it out, I think. Part of the sharp spike in ticks seen in teenage girls around the world. With severe motor ticks, you often see a lot of self-inflicted injuries. I wonder what the rate of those injuries are among these people with sudden onset. It sounds like, I mean, she's at least sent herself to the hospital multiple times. And so it's like, oh man, this is just so complex. World. It's no coincidence that Nicole's Tourette's also began during the anxiety of COVID. I was very lonely. I think everyone was. I think it was a period of time that, like, I kind of didn't know what to do with myself. Like, there was nothing to do. You can't see your friends, you can't see your family. Obviously, it wasn't a very nice period to be in. Basini, you're going to know this. Basini, what is the word when you basically have... It's not like... It's not an epiphenomenon necessarily. Maybe it is. But it's like an unexpected consequence of a decision, right? So COVID happened and everyone was worried about the mental health impacts. But nobody fucking expected a bunch of young teenage girls to develop Tourette's. Like, that was not on anyone's radar for prevention. Does anyone know what that's called? Not collateral damage. It's not quite it. There's like a technical term for that. Also, welcome Raiders. Welcome, welcome, welcome. TLDR, sorry. We are talking about um, social media onset um, Tourette's, basically. Emergent. No, no. The severe stress of social isolation is what pediatric neurologist Professor Russell Dale and his colleagues have identified as the key factor driving this new wave of ticks. Often the young people had a, a history of some problems, such as anxiety, depression, but then the stress of the pandemic plus other stress factors in life accumulated. And if you're chronically stressed, the body starts to, to fail and, and struggles to cope. And that's what we think is going on. So he's That feels like such a lame answer, though. Like, the, like 
there has never been seen, like even in the past, there's been major, major, major broad generational stressors, but it's like, we never saw, for example, why didn't young, younger women who went through, for example, like concentration camps come out with Tourette's or ticks? Like there's something unique happening in this case that is causing it. I wonder if he's going to lean into the social media more or if he's like hesitant, but it's like, there's something different here. There has to be. Is this then a, a lifelong impact of, of COVID, of the pandemic? I really hope not, but I suppose we don't know yet. I think we're still in the after effects of the pandemic. Things are still not normal. Ciao, amigos. No, Ciao with bye. <laughs> you absolute spoon. Nicole and her mum now spend much of their spare time as influencers, spreading awareness and having plenty of fun along the way. Between them, they've amassed more than 3 million followers on their TikTok channels. Does making videos for TikTok help you, Nicole? Oh, this is so rough because it's like now they've also made like a... <sighs> fuck. Like a... They have an incentive to maintain it, right? Like... Uh, for example, the one girl, Michaela, her ticks almost completely resolved. They didn't really go into how. I really wish they would have explained. They were like, yeah, it was just crazy for nine months. And it's like, maybe they'll get back to it. I'm like, how did it? St oh, they do probably get back to it. But it's like, okay, well, what if somebody's now ticking and now they're also making money from it? Um, how many other syndromes and, and conditions does the social contagion effect bleed into? So social contagion is often really seen, for example, like there was a huge explosion of a social contagion in Japan. I think in like, I think it was post-World War or something like that, where a bunch of Japanese men believed that their penises were being like shrunken and inverting into their body. Um, and even though their penises weren't, they were convinced that they were like shrinking. Um, and there was like mass hysteria and like high levels of distress. Um mimetic hazards mm, yeah no not this it's not quite social contagion it's more than that it's but yes um yeah the field of social contagion has been repeatedly criticized for lacking a clear and widely accepted definition okay boring um, what I'm looking for is mass psychogenesis, I think is what it's called. Psychogenetic illness. There we go. Um, so we've got... No, this isn't it either. Mass hysteria, it, spread of illness through a population where there is no infectious agent or contagion is rapid spread of illness. Okay, I guess so. Um, it's just where they don't have the Japanese one in here. Go. Wait, it's not in there. Um, yeah, okay, let's keep going. Sorry. Does it help at all with your condition? <laughs> no. That was a tick. <laughs> 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 oh, was that the truth? <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> I think I just like, I think, yes, it makes me feel more secure that like people are going to learn about it. In the past few years, Tourette and ticking videos have gained a massive following online. On TikTok mm -hmm. alone, they account for more than 6 billion views. Incredibly, researchers now believe they too might be playing a role in the explosion of ticks seen around the world. In speaking with your peers globally, what were the kinds of behaviours that you were seeing that were quite similar between all your patients? Yeah, the, it was the vocal ticks, the noises, that yeah. were so noticeable and characteristic. And I say it so often, I don't realise I'm doing it anymore. Beans! 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 Quite unusual phrases, sometimes quite long sentences. Bean! Bean sprout! A bean sprout! E Beans! Beans! Means and these same sentences and phrases you were seeing repeated by girls that across is the world, so across strange the world, both in australia and in america using similar phrases and it was that made us think that social Coral, media thank was a, you. a link in in what was going on and i think it became almost like uh, a contagion or they started to mimic or or do these ticks but you can't catch tourettes off tiktok can you no no but there is something called suggestibility <laughs> So suggestibility mm. is if you see something, you're more likely to do it. For Michaela Colby, TikTok videos weren't a factor in her tics, but she knows from experience the kind of impact they can have. And did you watch any of these sort of 
Tourette's videos online? Yeah, I did. Um, I got them sent to me a lot from other people. I didn't have TikTok at that point in time. What would watching other people tick do to you? It would kind of, like, I'd catch on with what they were saying, just the mimicking and everything, um, because, like, I did mimic That's people strange. in general. Like, she developed it, but didn't have any TikTok exposure. Okay, that's weird. That that breaks the whole theory down. Funny, uh -oh. Kind of repeat it, mm -hmm. and it would kind of stick. There was something about it that just it triggered me. <laughs> In this bizarre epidemic oh, no, 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 sparked by the pandemic, there is fine. some hope. Oh, you can't do that. <laughs> I just did. No. Through intensive therapy and the support of her family, gradually Michaela learned to control her tics. It's incredible to think how far you've come now. I mean, you've made so much progress. Amazing. I think I, I found like a new appreciation for myself a little bit more, um, which is really cool. Yeah, I'm just very proud of her that she was so strong to get through this. Anyway. Ah, uh, no, ma'am. It is. Yeah. And then it was so hard, you know. Anyway. <laughs> Moms are nice. The wonderful thing about Michaela is she's done incredibly well. She's fully recovered and she's clearly a very resilient young person and so I feel extremely optimistic about her in the future. So this is a condition that can be overcome? Definitely. You know, I would say at the moment only about 20% of the patients I've seen are fully recovered, which isn't great. Um, so that means 80% are continuing to have these ticks, some of them quite severely. <laughs> and how many patients wow. are we talking here? Tens of thousands globally, maybe, what maybe the fuck? hundreds of thousands. And you still don't think you have a full grasp of just how widespread it is? Not, not yet. So it was, in a sense, almost this perfect storm. We had a pandemic, we had an increase in social media, we had an increase in isolation, stress, suddenly a wave of totally teenage right. girls. I think that summarises it very well. It is a perfect storm. It might be a lifetime before we have a handle on the true impact of the pandemic on our kids. But for the teenagers living with ticks, it's a case of taking each unpredictable day at a time. Sorry that we've uh, triggered your ticks perhaps more than you would have liked, but it's okay. thank you for being so patient with us. Hate her. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it all this time. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. Six oh man, interesting. Okay, let's look into it. Let's do the science.